to be secure in earthly treasure, but not rich in God is to be poor indeed. Let us join together in our invitation to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Sing praises to our God. Shout for joy, all the earth. Proclaim the Lord's glory. Come, let us sing Voices United, number 222. Welcome everyone to St. Andrew's Church today. Welcome to those who join us online and those who are attending from Westworth, our partner church, a special welcome. Today is the last Sunday that during the summer we worship here at St. Andrew's. We will, well you will be, because I'm on holidays, but you all will be attending at Westworth for the next month and the long weekend in September. Now, Reverend Ray Cuthbert will be preaching for two weeks at St. Andrews, Reverend Marilyn Anderson Corkum for one week, and Reverend Heather Robbins for one week, and then Reverend Lorraine Mackenzie Shepherd will return the long weekend in September. Lorraine is working 11 12th, so she has the entire summer off. So go and join in and be a part of the activities there. And thanks to all who use their gifts and skills to help with the service. We thank those who work behind the scenes, who usher and make sure everything is in place, the candles and everything's on the table. And a special thanks to our scripture reader, Kathy Wilson from Westworth, also our soloist, Nikki Legrand, our candle lighter, Rita Swan, Tyler Craddock on the soundboard, Fred Cross, who records the service, and of course, Wes, our organist. And if you have any loose change, the coin box is at the back. We're collecting for one just city for the uh, breakfast program. And many of you, of you, I'm sure, have been continuing to watch The Amazing Race and uh, watch and continue to watch it because things are not always as they seem. I don't know anything more than that, but it looked like Craig and um, Catherine were out of the race due to COVID but things will be revealed as time comes, so stay tuned and keep watching. Also at the end of September, Westworth is having walked the path of truth of the residential schools of the Reconciliation Walk from September 18th to 25th. There's many different activities happening there. 
and we are welcome to attend. And on the Sunday morning, um, we will be attending church at Westworth on the 25th to attend service and hear Dr. Reverend Stan McKay speak. There's also a lunch after that service, so please sign up for that so Westworth will know how many to plan for. Also, Westworth has invited us to Vacation Bible School. There's posters at the back of the church, so if you have grandchildren coming or, or your own kids, um, please feel free to pick up the posters and enroll your children in that special Amazing Grace um, event. This Thursday will be Pat Druitt's um, graveside service at High Bluff Cemetery at 11. All are welcome to attend. Pat passed away just before COVID and we've been unable to have a service for her. So we'll be having a service on Thursday. Celebration Sunday is coming up. You may have seen the poster. And one change we've made this year, for those who have lawn chairs and can bring them, please lug them along. That'll save us less chairs to haul up from downstairs. But if you forget your chair or get halfway here and realize you haven't got it, don't worry. We will have chairs available, but if you can, bring a lawn chair and uh, throw it in the car, and that's September 11th. That will be an outdoor celebration. Pray for great weather and for our families to return. Um, we won't be having the 100-foot banana split, which is truthfully me one of my favorites. Not yours, but mine. And um, so there'll be no coming to the trough. We will have individual sanitary Sundays that we each can have, which is really only thing that we can do and I appreciate that we can do that so but um, anyway we'll be having fun the bouncy will be here we'll have an outdoor laid-back kind of service and dress comfortably wear shorts t-shirt and pray 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 for beautiful weather also um, Charmaine Bacon will be having a recital this Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the church um, there's a coin collection Feel free to come and the money goes for the music program at the church. Also, I want to mention that some of you may or may not know that Josh Ward was in the, is still in the hospital this week. He had a terrible reaction to a medication he was on and ended up in the ICU and had a seizure. Um, he's doing fine. Um, they, f they feel he'll be on the floor as soon as they find a room, but he's the minister um, from this church, but he's also a minister at uh, St. Matthew's Maryland Community Ministry. So continue to remember him in your prayers. Marianne said that he's doing well and is well on his road to recovery, but he's still very, very tired, and um, it will take some time for him to recuperate from that. I think those are all the announcements. There are refreshments after church, so um, thanks, Doreen, so please join us for that. Let us acknowledge the territory on which we worship. Welcome in the name of Christ. Welcome to this place of retreat and refuge of worship and wonder. It is good to be together here in this place and it is good to connect online. Let us continue to worship our God. Let us pray. Eternal God, as people raised with Christ, teach us to seek the things that are above where Christ abides in glory. Even as our true, true lives remain hidden with you in Christ, grant us a glimpse of our true selves made pure and whole in your love. Renew your spirit within us. Make us fit to bear the glory of your image. Amen. We light the candles. The peace candle was lit before the service began. And we'll light the other candles, the Christ candle, which shows us the way and lights our path and helps us to see Jesus is the light of the world. We light the orange candle, symbolizing that we are to remember those that went to the residential schools to walk with them in their journey of reconciliation which is so upon our minds this, this week, especially as the Pope visited Canada. 
We light the blue and yellow candles symbolizing the Ukraine, the syllables, mm, symbolizing Ukraine, and we remember them in our prayers and thoughts. We light the rainbow candle symbolizing that we are called to go out into the world and to be the light to the world. May these candles light our way and our path. Let us sing together 356, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. for our special children's time. And I brought with you, with me, everything that was in my junk drawer in my office. Now you may find this very interesting what's in here. I certainly did, because I found things I didn't even know was in there. I had a case for my glasses with no glasses. I have a, one of those hanger things to hang your pictures on the wall, comb, brush, keys to God knows where, um, dental floss, which I didn't know I had, things for keys, all sorts of pins. And the pin that I should be wearing every Sunday, the pin that symbolizes our affirming is in here. Um, it never gets worn because it's in my drawer and I never see it. And interestingly enough, I have a hammer, not one hammer, but two hammers. I'm not sure why. This hammer is quite amazing because it turns into all sorts of screwdrivers. So if you ever need a screwdriver of any size, this does come apart and many different things are in it. Oh yeah, it's at this end, see? Many, it's quite interesting. I had fun this morning when I was looking in my junk drawer. There's a lighter. <clears throat> Some tide remover for stain. Lip gloss, eye things, toothpaste, first aid kit, bookmarks. Staples, all sorts of things. <clears throat> So, do I really need all these things? I mean, what on earth do I need a hammer for in my office? I guess when I put pictures up, but I've been here so long, there's no more room for any pictures to go up. There's many things in here that I probably never use. There's a pencil, um, which I never use a pencil, um, and it's one of those ones that has the ink, like the lead in it. I never use it because I can never figure out how to use it, so I never use it. But there's things in your junk drawer that you never use. Some things you keep. Now, I keep this hammer because it was my dad's. My dad was one who fixed things. So the handle was broken, so he just took tape and fixed it. So I keep that kind of as a memory of my dad, and every time I run across it, I remember him. But the stuff in my junk drawer, whether it's used or not, we hold on to things. There are possessions. Whether they're important or not, or whether we use them or not, we often keep things because we want to, we think we might use them, but they're important to us. And our story today is about someone who was holding on to a lot of things in his life and forgot what was really important. 
Now, what I could do is have a garage sale and empty all my junk drawers and get rid of stuff. And sometimes that's what we do. But let's pray and ask God to help us to know what's really important in our lives. God, we thank you that you are present with us. And we thank you for all the stuff that we have. But help us mostly to know that our treasure is built into the things that are important, our family, our friends, and you. Help us not to forget it where our treasure is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be reading Psalm 107, verses 1 to 9, found on page 831, and we'll be singing uh, the response. Give thanks, for God is gracious. Let the redeemed of God say so, those redeemed from trouble, gathered in from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Some lost their way in desert wastes, finding no place to settle. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to you, God, in their trouble. You rescued them from their distress. You led them by a straight path till they reached a place to settle. Let them thank you, O God, for your steadfast love for the wonders you do for us. For you satisfy the thirsty and fill the hungry with good things. Our scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21 the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant of harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. <clears throat> then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Nikki, for sharing your gift and ministry of music with us. Let's pray. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, feet and hands to do the work that you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you hear, you walk into uh, two people arguing, and you can hear the voices escalating just a little bit. So what do you do? Do you go through a different door, run and hide, try to go through a different entrance? Do you tiptoe past them? Or do you go in and try to help them with some sort of management conflict style and try to help the two resolve the conflict? Now, conflict is a part of our everyday life. We all end up in conflict with someone, whether it's your children, your partner, your spouse, at work. At some point in life, you end up in a conflict because a conflict is when there's a clash. We have different opinions and a clash occurs and two opinions cannot occupy the same place at the same time, really. You have to figure out a way to make the two work. So there's different ways of doing that. And I'm told that there's five different styles. There's the accommodator, the one who simply says, you know, it's okay, um, you just do it your way, I'll be okay with that. The problem is the accommodator is really not okay with that. They just say that they're okay. And that be begins to be revealed later on, you discover that that wasn't okay. There's the avoider, there's the person who just says, there's no conflict, there, there's no conflict, there's, there's just, we're having um, a discussion. We're just having a lively discussion. There's no conflict. Then there's the compromiser, the one who will be whittled away to decide that what they really wanted really wasn't that important. So they compromise. Then there's the one who's the competitor. The two voices are raised and get louder and louder and louder, and usually whoever wins that conflict is the one who's the loudest and the most aggressive. Now the best way and the hardest way to end a conflict is if you collaborate. Now that takes a lot of work. It does, and it's not easy, but what you do is you sit down, the two of you, and sometimes you have a third person to help you. And what you do is you talk it out. And often in council meetings, we'll, we'll have opportunities where we, we disagree with one another and we have to talk about it and work it out and you see each other's side, you see each other's point of view. And then you find a way where everybody is in agreement, that they can live with the decision that we're going to make. Sometimes that's easier than others, but that's how you really develop a strength in relationship and that's how things come to be. That's how conflicts are resolved. Now Jesus is drawn into a conflict. The young rich ruler comes to Jesus and asks him if he can help him. Jesus' response is, I'm, I'm not, you're preaching to the wrong person, I'm not going to resolve this. Now why do you think Jesus did that? Did Jesus not care? Was he avoiding? Um, was he compromising? No. What Jesus knew was that there was something more at stake than what this man was asking, that this man's treasure was in his earthly things, that his treasure was in what he had, not in really getting his brother to share the inheritance because really he wanted more room to put all his stuff. And in this passage, if you go back and count, I and or me is mentioned 11 times. That's a lot of self in one short scripture. Jesus says there's more important things than what's at stake is your soul. And again, we might squirm a bit because we don't really talk about our souls in, in the United Church. And so we'll talk about actions. What actions would this man need to do to know that his treasure is not in earthly things, but in heavenly things? And I remember when we were in Guatemala and one of the youth 
when we were at the dump, realized how rich they really were and said, is it sinful to be rich? And I said, no, it's not wrong to be rich, but what comes with richness is responsibility. We need to account for all that we have. We need to not only share what we have, but to do good with what we have. We need to know where our treasure is. Is it in the things of this world? Or is it in our connectedness to one another, to our family, to our friends, to our God? When we look at the church and, and outside, what do people see? Do people see a place that's well taken care of? Do they see the flowers outside and realize that they're welcome to come in? And when they come in, are they welcomed? When people see us at work in the world, what do they see? Do they see us busy doing our thing or do they see us being open to them? It's important to share what we have, not only financially, but to have our treasure in the things of God. Conflict is a part of our human living. How we live out those conflicts is often our style, often what we've learned. But one thing is to realize our treasure is in our God. Time and time again during the summer, the parables have called us to, what does the Lord require of me? The Lord requires that we act justly, show kindness, and walk humbly with our God. We can take care of ourselves, but we also need to be open to help others, take, take care of our world, to pray for Ukraine, to help and give where we can, to do what we can to encourage and help others in the world. Water is needed in all the community ministries, a very logical thing during the heat of the summer. We have ample goods for our own selves. We need to share those goods with others, like the breakfast program, which is new at One Just City Oak Table. We need to take time for our souls, and summer is a good time to take time to reflect. My holidays are coming up, and every time I'm on holidays, I take some time to reflect about the balance or the lack of balance in my life. And what do I need to do to bring that about? To have time for study and worship and devotion, because that's important to me. That's part of my treasure here on earth. During this summertime, think about where your treasure is, for there really is where your heart is. To remember what the Lord requires of us in our actions, in our words, in our deeds, in our sayings, in simply how we walk from this place and live our lives. We can either choose the way of the world or we can choose the way of God. Let us choose wisely. Amen. Let us sing together 582, There is a Spirit in the Air, verses 1, 3, 5, and 6.
You can tell holidays are coming. I have my wrong glasses on, so all of you are just a blur. I can read, but I can't see any of you. I've left my minute for mission on my desk, either at home or in my office. So I know what it's about, so I'm going to share it with you. But it's about camp. And I would venture that many of us in our day as youth and young children have attended camp. I used to work at camps all the time and I loved going to camp as a kid. Camp touches our hearts and spirits in a way that I think we really do know where our treasure is. When we go to camp, it's a time to have fun, we meet different people, kids play together, but they learn about God. It's an opportunity in creation often in a beautiful setting where they learn about God, about Jesus, about their faith. And oftentimes, youth make a commitment, and many of our youth have been to camp and served at camps, and have made a commitment to serve God in different ways. And I know many of us have been counselors at camp in days past, and it's a, an opportunity and an experience you never forget. I've attended many camps in my days and worked at many camps and enjoyed each and every one of them. So when you think of giving to mission and service, remember that the money you give goes to camps over the summer. And remember in prayer camps this summer as many children and youth are there and also in Vacation Bible School, which is a week-long camp, a day camp, will remember the camp at Westworth during our prayer time. But when you give, you give to experiences such as this, which are opportunities for children and youth to learn about God. Let us pray. And when you hear the response, give us riches, your riches, O God, our sung response is, come Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Those who are rich by the world's standards have millions in their investment accounts. In God's eyes, there is a different standard of wealth. May we see the wealth in the sunrise, a cool summer's day's rain, the sunset on a hot summer day. Holidays that refresh the spirit and soul and bring new life. We pray for those who attend camps, for those who work at camps, give them strength, help them to deal with the situations that come up, the conflicts. Help the, those that attend camps to build friendships and relationships Will the, that will last them a lifetime. We pray for Lorraine and Nancy who are on holidays. Keep them safe and nurture their spirits and souls. May we see wealth in family and friends and time spent with them while summer is on, for one never knows what tomorrow holds. We pray that we may see the wealth in spiritual things, in coming to church, in being a part of a faith community, whether it's at Westworth, St. Andrews, or another church. May we know the joys of love and community and faith. May we know the wealth of all that you have given us, a wonderful church, a faith community, friends, family, and a slower pace for summer fun. We pray for Westworth and for the Vacation Bible School that is coming up. May many children register, be with those who will work. Give us your riches, O God. We remember those who are waiting for surgery, like Sue Bolton those who are grieving in the loss of loved ones that they love, such as the Druid family, who will be celebrating Pat's life next week, the Browska family, who celebrated Judy's life this past week, and Ruth Nichols' family, who celebrated her life out at their farm. We pray for Connie Blamey and her family, as Rex passed away a few weeks ago. We remember them. We pray for Joshua Ward and Elner Gieb, who are still in the hospital. We thank you that Josh is doing so well. Continue to be with him and let him know that he is remembered. We pray for all those that were affected by the Pope's recent visit, 
May it be the beginning of a journey of truth and reconciliation in a way that it honors the indigenous peoples of this country. We pray for survivors of residential schools, for their families, and for all who've been affected because of the physical, sexual, verbal, and systemic abuse. We pray that you would be with us all in this journey of reconciliation. Be with each of us as we wrestle with the issues of the day and what it means for us to walk the path of reconciliation. Be with us as we worship together at Westworth for the next month. Be with all those who preach and work and attend. May their spirits be lifted and their souls touch. Give us your riches, O oh God. Let us pray together the translation of the Lord's Prayer found on page 916. If you have a words only, it's probably at the front or the end, there's a sheet of paper. Let us pray. Our Father, Mother, who is in the heavens, may your name be made holy. May your dominion come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the bread we need and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not put us to the test, but rescue us from evil. For yours is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us be grateful for the many blessings that God gives in our lives. We may give by par, e-transfer, drop it off at the church, put it in the mailbox, or leave it at the back of the church. Offering from Westworth folks will be dropped off at your church. Be sure that your Westworth is marked on those envelopes. And let us be grateful for the many blessings that God has given us as we give our gifts of our offerings. Go forth as people who've been raised to a newness of life. Go forth as people whose lives are hidden with Christ in the living God. Go forth as people who will be revealed in glory when Christ's glory is revealed. We go forth as Christ's workers in our world. <laughs> 